before I paint the cylinder, I'm going to put the piston rod in, see if I can sort this gland out, and that also that gland there for the, the slide rod valve. I'll concentrate on this one first. It's obviously been a brass casting, but it's been drilled off centre. It's had a piece put in there, and I'll bring the camera in and see how far away that hole actually is from being in the centre. Those two boards are in line, but the stud, studs are a mile off. I mean, it's just no way will that fit that way. But it does, however, fit quite nicely that way. So I think I'll see if I can just utilise this one. I want to try and keep as many original parts as I can on the engine. I don't want to sort of completely rebuild it. I don't quite know what's been happening here. It's also had a bush put in there, a bronze bush put in there. This is the piston and the piston rod, and it's a two-piece piston. The top, the ring, and that body part, very nicely made it is indeed. The tape are on there that locks into that place, exactly the way it should be. And that's quite a nice piece on the end of there. That'll have been made out of the solid. That's a nice fit on there, really nice fit. And that's also a decent fit in there. So I think we'll do a, a, a sub-assembly on this part, put the piston in and see if we can repack our gland. Some nice heavy steam cylinder oil here just to lubricate it on its first sort of run. That feels quite nice in there, nothing wrong with that really. I'll put two nuts on there just to keep it in place. Stop it from dropping off. These are three eight BSF nuts and there's also lock nuts go on top of them. And the lock nuts are half the, the thickness, just the way they're supposed to be. Right. <coughs> I'll get two blocks of wood to stand this on so I can work on it a, a much sort of better than trying to roll around the bench with a bastard thing. Unfortunately, I've had a small technical hitch as much as I've lost the on the radio mic so there's no sound on this video. So I'm just going to do a, like a, a voiceover, I suppose. You can see here I've installed the bottom half of the piston. That's on like a tape I'll up on the piston rod. This is the piston ring, it's one ring the big, thick, strong cast iron ring. I can get it in without using a piston clamp. Uh, once it goes down past the top of the ball, it is a really nice fit. Clean the top of the piston, a little bit of oil on the ball. You can't put too much oil in when you're assembling an engine. The nut that goes on the top, um, I think it should be a castellated nut because there's actually a hole in the top of the piston rod. I'll probably end up making a castellated nut for it. I'm just going to tighten this up because we don't put things together without tightening them, otherwise you end up having problems. So we can turn it over, rest it on another couple of bits of wood. And we'll have a look at the bottom end, see what we can do with that. I've got the cylinder suitably blocked up. As you can see, the pistons are real nice fit in there. Not too tight, it's just the way it's supposed to be. Lift the gland up. And you can see that's where the packing material goes. In there. I'm lucky enough to have some real old packing material. This has a good chance to be asbestos based. It's not like I'm going to grind it and cause dust, uh, but it will be proper stuff as opposed to some of the modern synthetic stuff which doesn't seem to work as well. And it's the ideal size, I think it's quarter inch square. So I'll we'll cut it to length and then go about getting some packing material in there. Each piece of packing material is called a turn. 
so you put probably three or four turns into here what you don't do is when you're doing like a spiral you cut it a length pack it in and then cut another length and sort of stagger the joints as you go this material being graphite based is also self lubricating it's got little flakes of metal in it as well uh, it really is nice stuff we've used it on the central steam wagons on regulator glands and up and there was given no problems at all that's the first wrap in or the first turn in a real messy job you can see the metal flakes on my fingers just sort of job where you should be wearing gloves um, sadly I didn't put any gloves on that's another turn in and you can see how I've staggered the joint once this has been packed and tightened down it'll bed in very quickly and you'll have to adjust the gland and then once it's been set up and run for a while it, it'll stop like that for quite a long time right, so that's another one, that's two probably one more is going to do this obviously I've decided to leave it there and putting a little bit of oil on the, on the studs is just habit from my days of building car engines I suppose you never ever had dry studs or dry nuts a little bit of lubricant always helps so we'll tighten this down and then probably loosen it off again put another turn in and that will be it these studs and nuts are BSF which is a nice fine thread which is ideal so it means you can get good adjustment because a little bit of a turn only moves the, the gland a real small amount where a coarse thread like Whitworth would move them a lot further it's very strange doing a voiceover and watching my hands work and talk about them I find it easy to talk when I'm doing something uh, and I do and find it as easy to do with a voiceover, that's why I very rarely do them. I can see how it's nipping it open, it's pushing the packet in nice and tight, gripping the piston rod. You can see all the graphics rubbing off onto the piston, onto the piston rod already. And that sort of looks and feels quite nice. There's two check nuts going here and the check nuts are half the thickness of the main nuts. They're just to stop it from undoing itself. Like I say, the initial year it'll bed in very quickly then once it's been adjusted and set up that will be it for quite a long time the same method is still used on steam valves even today so hold the bottom nut I'll just hold the nut up against the the flange and tighten the one up against it why they call it a lock nut because you lock one up against the other see that gripping so it's probably got it's got a good grip but like I say it will run in very quickly indeed There's two taper head brass screws in here, I don't know what they're for. 
I don't think it served any purpose um, when I stripped the engine. The little brass inserts you can see on that on the, on the face of the cylinder, on the flange of the cylinder, are what hold the um, the cylinder cover on, or at least the, the cylinder lagging. It's got a nice piece of lagging on, which has been added on at a later date by the look of it, but it has been nicely made, so I'm going to retain it. I'm going to give the bottom of the cylinder a coat of paint before I actually assemble it onto the upright. That's spray cleaner just to make sure there's no oil or dirt in there because these were blasted, um, vapor blasted, and then sprayed with a thin oil to stop them rusting. A nice blow off of the airline, and the paint will go straight onto there. It's a real quality paint. Uh, the colour is actually Stuart Turner Green. I did give the engine base and the upright or the standard part a coat of red oxide primer before I put the green on but this green paint is real good quality stuff it'll go on to yellow problem at all and give no problems once the engine's assembled I'll be able to touch it up but this is just sort of the, the bit that's going to be upside down and it'll be difficult to paint it when it's upside down Any excess paint that goes onto any machine faces, it'll be scraped off with a razor blade when it's dry. I've got an old bench grinder here with a wire wheel on one end, and it's got a mop on the other end, Scotch Brite mop, and I use this for removing light surface rust. That's a much heavier duty one. I bought that at a car, it was at a car boot sale. But you ought to be careful because these things will remove metal as well. You can see I've got the grinder clamped on my middle table because I've got no space left. Uh, bench space is a premium in my shop. This is a steady bar that holds the rear of the cylinder up. It's quite badly pitted, but it is a nice shape. I was intending or I was thinking we'll make a new one um, but I'm going to leave it the way it is and try and keep as many original parts on the engine as I can I thought about skimming it to get a nice shine on it but I'll have to take that much off because it's so badly pitted and it's strange how this part is into other parts of the engine aren't pitted at all so I think what I'll do is I'll use a wire wheel to take the, the thickest of the rust off and I'll paint it I might paint that one black because there's one or two of the other engine frame assemblies or engine frame accessories that I'm also going to paint black. Wire wheel it takes rust off quite nicely without doing any damage. You don't wear gloves in case they get caught in the wheel, or at least I don't, but I do wear eye protection. A dust mask will also be a pretty good idea. Once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do, it's very important. And I am getting very near to 100,000 subscribers. Anyway, thanks for watching.